Josh said, and uh, thankful we get to meet tonight. Amen. I was watching the service. I watched online uh, the church in California where they had put the cease and desist letters on the on the doors, and uh, and the pastor got up at the church today. He said, "I never thought I'd say this in all my ministry. I never thought I'd say that we're meeting illegally today. How about that? Think about that." And uh, he said, uh, "You know, if you if you need to leave and want to leave." I'll understand, you know, he said, but I'm here and I'm going to preach. And if they come and close the service down, I'll go next door to the park and preach. And, uh, and so um, I'm telling you, that's, we don't have to worry about that right now. Right. right now. But there was a time I never thought we'd have to worry about that in America at all. Right. Right. And we do. And so um, I'm telling you, we better really be praying for our country, praying for our brothers and sisters in other states and other churches right now. And be praying for the pastors. I'm telling you, there's an all-out attack on pastors as well. I've talked to pastors here recently that are suffering from depression and just going through some battles and some things that the devil's really doing everything he can to destroy their ministries. And uh, and none of us are none of us are supermen. Amen. None, none of us uh, none of us can do that without the help of the Lord. And so you keep all the pastors in prayer. Amen. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to bless the service. I'm excited about what we got uh, tonight. You'll see in just a few minutes. But let's ask God's blessings on the service tonight. Brother Chris Stevens, would you lead us in prayer, please? Amen. Listening to this chorus, I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. <laughs> Saved, I'm glad I'm free, I'm glad I'm covered. 
glad you saved. Say amen. Amen. I'm glad I can say I know I'm saved. Amen. Well, just one announcement I'll make really quickly is don't forget Wednesday night we'll continue our Teach Me to Pray. Or Lord, teach us to pray series. And Wednesday night we'll give you some tips on how to uh, incorporate into your prayer time some things that will help expand your prayer time. So I hope you'll be here Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We'll see you then. Amen. Well, let's sing a couple verses of At the Cross together. receive my sight and now I am happy all the day but drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe here Lord I give myself away tis all that I can do at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart receive my sight and now I am happy all the day. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, we're going to take a few minutes to do something uh, special tonight. You know, one of the draw, really bad drawbacks to this pandemic has been we've had to shut down our master clubs and, and uh, things going on. And our master clubs have worked really hard. They were really working toward going to regional competition and different things. And they just had to, they didn't get to do all that. And But we wanted to spend some time tonight uh, recognizing some things that they did do. And I want to tell you something, some things they did will amaze you tonight. Amen. So, Brother Josh, you come and take over and kind of lead us through it tonight. Amen. Well, well, we're so excited about tonight. I tell you, one of the things that I believe is wrong with our young people today uh, in our schools and across the nation is this. We, are, we have taken away the consequences for doing wrong things and bad things, but we've also taken away the incentives for doing the good things. And we're winding up with a generation of young people that, well, there's no reason for me not to do bad or to try, but there's also no reason for me to succeed because nobody, uh, and young people, let me say that to you, uh, if nobody else ever sees it, God does. God does. And every morning you get up, when you go to school, whether it's on a computer or on a school bus, in a, in a classroom, uh, on a ball field, at a job, you do your best if for no other reason, one, because God's watching you. Uh, it's his testimony that you represent. But there's a last name in your name, and there's a mama and there's a daddy behind that name that you represent as well. Uh, one of the motivating factors, I've said it many times in my life, uh, growing up, uh, my Savior, my church family. I didn't want to ever disappoint my church, but I didn't want to disappoint my parents either. Uh, I didn't want, want them to let them down. And, uh, and tonight we've got a group of young people in our church. I'm so happy uh, to see you here. Uh, we're so thankful for what you've done. Uh, Master Clubs is a, a vital part of our church and we look forward to that. Uh, and of course we were just getting ready to go to regionals uh, when the, the shutdown happened back in March. But nonetheless, we wanted to uh, recognize some folks tonight and uh, tell you how much we appreciate what you've done. So here's what we're going to do. Um, Miss Beth and Miss April, I believe, are going to help me. So if y'all want to come on up, and then if all the kids, if you'll come up here as well uh, and just kind of line up right here. Um, the, we know who you are. You're wearing red T-shirts tonight. So uh, we know who you are. We can come and get you if need be. Um, but with regionals, there's a lot that goes into it. First of all, um, y'all can just kind of line up. First of all, I do want to say to the parents, thank you. Um, you know, the teachers do a lot of work. Uh, these are a couple of our teachers with our older kids, uh, but there's uh, others that, that have classes, and um, we want to thank the parents uh, for, for what you do. Uh, and then... 
uh, behind this, uh, all the kids had worked together. A lot of them had worked together uh, for a new song with the sign language this year. Y'all remember uh, the last two years. I really think the reason they canceled it because they didn't want us to win the trophy for singing again this year. <laughs> I mean, I really believe that, but um, but nonetheless, um, they had worked on a new song, and hopefully what we're praying for is once we get back to having Master Club, we can kind of refresh everybody, and we'll get to do that for you uh, here at the church. But uh, Miss Amy. Amy Witt, I'm sure she's probably watching tonight, and Miss Amy was so vital in helping with the sign language, and we want to thank her. Uh, and then, of course, not just that, but uh, they asked for, for judges, and uh, Miss Susan uh, Fry, Miss Patricia Delgado, and Simon were all going to be going with us to be judges this year as well. And so, uh, it just, it, this doesn't happen by accident. That's what I want you to see. Uh, there's a lot of people, parents and teachers and, uh, and volunteers along the way that make this happen. Uh, and so um, I'm going to kind of go through the list tonight and um, and uh, some of our folks wasn't able to be here, but I still want to mention um, what they were going to do in Master Club. Um, and uh, so Elena Justice, she was going to be a part of our ensemble and our Bible quiz team. Uh, and then Miss Christina is here. Uh, Christina Kearns, uh, she was going to do the craft, the ensemble, and the Bible storytelling. And um, what we've done for the kids this year, uh, guys, we wanted to do a little something for you. We have got a bracelet, Master Club bracelet, and a medal as well uh, for the work that you put in this year. Uh, next, we've got Miss Alyssa Kearns, and Alyssa was going to be part of a trio with Kara and Anna. She was going to be an ensemble. Uh, she was going to do an art project and also be in the Bible storytelling as well. <clears throat> Um, next, we have Kara Culberson, and um, Kara uh, was going to be in the trio there, um, the ensemble, the poem writing, craft, uh, and the art as well. <clears throat> Um, Anna Dark, uh, she was going to be uh, in a trio with Alyssa and Anna and was planning to do the Bible storytelling, uh, the craft, and the ensemble as well. <clears throat> I really like the ensemble because that helps my youth choir. Amen. Um, <clears throat> We're thankful for that. Um, and then we've got um, Kevin Kincaid. He was doing a missionary biography, um, art, craft, puppets, the ensemble, and the Bible Bowl quizzing as well. Um, Next, we have um, Addie Langley. Uh, she was going to do an object lesson, puppets, crafts, ensemble, the piano, uh, the trio with Charity and Caitlin, uh, and the Bible quiz team as well. <clears throat> Um, and then we have um, uh, Miss Caitlin um, Evans, and um, we wanted to do something a little bit different as well um, for our sixth graders, and I didn't read all these off there, but um, Miss Caitlin, if I've got this right, she was going to do piano, poem uh, writing, ensemble, trio with Addie and Charity, and the Bible quiz team. Um, but we also, uh, we did this for several others as well, uh, and I want to read these off. But for our sixth graders, uh, this is, uh, me and Miss Beth were kind of fighting earlier. Uh, it's a good night for me, a bad night for her. Uh, and that uh, whenever we get back together, I get all these sixth graders, uh, and of course she's, she loses them out of uh, Master Club there. But one of the things we wanted to do, Miss um, April and Miss Beth, Beth got together, and with our um, sixth graders, we didn't just want to recognize um, what they had done as far as Master Club, but these kids, listen, the Lord already is molding them. And uh, you're never too young, whether you're in here and you're four or whatever, you're never too young for the Lord to start doing something with your life. And, uh, and so one of the things that uh, they talked about is we wanted not just to recognize uh, our sixth graders for what they've done, but also for a character trait that they stood out for. And we've got that on their medals as well. And, and Caitlin, in addition to all the things that we mentioned there, um, we wanted to give her the outstanding character quality of just of being determined as well. <clears throat> Uh, 
Um, next, we have Charity Kearns, and um, four, uh, she's one of our sixth graders as well, and uh, she was going to do Bible storytelling, puppets, the trio with Addie and Caitlin, and ensemble. Um, and uh, after uh, Miss Beth and Miss April talk, uh, Charity, we want to recognize you tonight for being tender hearted. <clears throat> And then our, our last sixth grader um, was um, Mikey Martinez. And Mikey wasn't able to be here tonight. He may be watching by live stream. But he was going to do Bible storytelling, hymn story, uh, puppets, ensemble, art, and Bible quiz team. And um, we uh, gave him the care, outstanding character of being respectful as well. <clears throat> Now, with this, um, um, Kara, Addie, Mikey, Caitlin, and Elena had worked hard on something called crown quizzing uh, for Master Club. Uh, this was going to be, our, actually, this year was going to be our first team ever um, competing in uh, this particular um, competition at regionals. They had to memorize 10 Bible verses, the truth in the verse, and where it was found. And uh, Kara uh, had kind of become the one that had really excelled and uh, was kind of our, our superstar, the one to beat, setting the pace there. Um, but we're real excited about that. And kids, I want to tell you, uh, whether or not we went to regionals, you being in that book will never do you wrong. And uh, listen, you stay in it every day of your life. You stay in that book. And I want you to know uh, that I'm so proud of you, and I love you, and I'm so thankful for you. Uh, I want um, Addie, Kevin, and Kara to stay up here for just a minute. But let's give them all a hand real quick. <clears throat> Now, um, with these, um, with these three, and let's see, <laughs> Kara, Kara, come here real quick, Kara. I'm gonna get you right here. They're disappearing on me. Um, so. Um, with, with Master Club, there's a book that they do each year, and there's crowns that they can earn. And um, if, if a kid just kind of does what they're supposed to do through Master Club, they should get a bronze and a silver and a gold. Um, but then, there's more. Um, there is a platinum that you can go to, and um, with the platinum, it includes uh, all the, the, the typical book work for Master Club, but there's a lot of extra reading and research in order to get platinum. Um, there is a, to complete it, you have to have a minimum of 15 badges beyond what the regular book um, requires. Uh, and by the time these kids get through Master Club, it's a, a total program there from begin to end, uh, they'll wind up with uh, at least 50 badges in order to qualify for platinum. And Kara uh, this year has really worked hard. Um, she needs the 15, and she's still got how many more years in Master Club? Okay, and so uh, she's at eight badges right now, and uh, she's already got her Christian art, her Christian character, um, and just to let you know, that Christian character, in addition to studying, to being attentive and uh, about the faith of God, she had to write a hundred word report on that as well. Um, you know, she studied Proverbs 31. She's done some of the hiking, the bicycling, and then also she was part of our Bible quiz team um, that, um, that learned the 10 Bible stories and the passages. And so she's over halfway to her platinum, and we're just so excited for her. So I just want to recognize her and give her a hand tonight. So, <laughs> That is a huge accomplishment, and uh, we're so proud of her. But um, with the platinum, um, um, we have, um, that I know of, Miss Beth, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but we've never had platinum at Community Baptist Church. And um, this year, we've got two of them. And uh, we're so excited about this. This is a huge, huge accomplishment. Uh, it's not just coming to church. That's part of it. But these kids, um, Addie and Kevin here, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it here in just a minute, but literally hours, hours upon hours outside of it. Uh, and you say, well, why are you so excited about that? Well, we can get excited if they hit a home run. 
We get excited if they make an A honor roll, and that's fine. We get excited if they make a uh, get a college scholarship or they can play an instrument. That's all fine and good. But a kid getting in that book, friend, that ought to do something for us. And I am just so proud of these kids. And so uh, before we say anything else, we made a little video tonight that will talk a little bit about it. Uh, and I want you to, to watch this with us tonight. Hi, my name is Kevin Kincaid. I'm in the sixth grade and I'm 11 years old. My name is Addie Langley. I'm 12 years old and in the sixth grade. I was at the camp meeting in Alamance, the camp meeting in Alamance in um, August 4th, 2015 is when I got saved. You were there, you helped me. I was sitting on my dad's lap and you were over there. We walked out and then you taught me and brought me through the Bible and helped me understand what it meant and then you helped me get saved. It was June 25th, 2018 and the teens and my mom were in Tennessee and then my brother and my dad were about to go kill some skunks over on the farm. So I was in my bed and then they had their guns and everything. So then I grabbed my dad by the shoulder. Then I told him that I had just gotten saved and then he walked me back to his bedroom and then he asked me questions like, how did you feel? Were you crying? Did you feel a change? And then he called the pastor and my grandma and all that and told them. Puppets from regionals, um, Christian reading. So how many badges have you earned now? Um, 28, but Miss Beth has to get the other ones, and i um, trying to get 30. Some of the badges that I've earned are the bicycling badge, and for that you had to learn how to be safe and how to ride correctly, and the hand signals. The campfire, you had to build one safely, and then you had to learn how to put one out. And I've learned the uh, Christian Bible Institute. That was one of my badges. The Christian art, I made Jonah and the whale, and drew a person knocking on a door. And then one of them was the music badge. I did Fanny Crosby in the music in the Bible, and then fill your shoes. I wrote about George Mueller, and then I did the great Bible stories. That was where you read the Bible. Hiking was one of them. You had to go for a, a two mile walk or a one walk, mile walk two times. And then I did the New Testament. I read all the New Testament wrote all the Old Testament, did a proverb, did one Proverbs a day, one chapter a day, I went, I did the Sunday School Faithfulness badge, and I, right now I'm doing the Christian Bible Institute badge, and I'm working on Christian reading, and I'm reading Billy Sunday. Now, um, you mentioned in your badges there that uh, you read the uh, New Testament and the Old Testament, so you read the whole Bible, correct? Yes. And, and tell me, uh, how long did you take to read the Bible? Like, um, I think it was 30 months, I think. Yeah, 30 months. Getting to come and then sing songs and talk to friends and everything like that. Doing the, um, my favorite part has been when we were in Masters Club and we get to do the, um, 
where you do the cards and like speed stacking and when you do the cards and you have to match it with the Bible verse and the person that was in it and then for and then doing that for regionals and going trying to beat the people to try and learn, learn it faster than them and say it faster than them. A few of the badges, like Christian reading, you can read about people from like World War II who were Christians and had to go to concentration camps, and then you can like just think about how they didn't have the freedom to like talk about God or anything. Then you can like remember that, then like know how much better off you are than if you were there. Uh, it's helped me to learn the Bible better and apply some of the stories in the Bible to my life. Get ready to do a lot of work and sit at your desk or your dining room table for a long time. Uh, but is it worth it? Yes. Would, would you do it again? Yes. You have to work hard, don't ever give up, and have a schedule. Don't just do like do one or two one day and then just wait like a week. If you want to do it, you have to keep like on a schedule. Like when I was reading my Bible, I, I my mom made a list and, uh, and the dates on it, and she divided the Bible up into like one day I would read 20 chapters. The next day, maybe I'd read 10. And like the big books, like Psalms, you can divide those up if you want. If you like reading, you can divide them up into big parts. Or if you don't, if you're, if you can't really read that good, you can divide them up into like smaller parts, like 10 chapters a day. But I did it. I, how I did it was I did it like I did 20 chapters each day and then I did like the last day I did like t the last 10 chapters. Yo, I know what my least favorite one is, was all the names. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't say half of them. Um, Miss Addie, I'm going to have you come up here first. Um, and um, I just want to read to you, uh, Miss Addie qualified this year with 16 badges. And um, here, is, here is the thing she's done so far. She's done the athletics, which she had to research, play, and write a report on the sport. A lot of writing involved. These reports, at minimum of 100 words, is that right? So any reports you hear me talking about tonight, these kids wrote at least 100 words on these subjects. She was part of the Bible quiz team. Uh, again, she had to study the, the 10 Bible stories and passages for that. The bicycling, safety, and riding. The Christian art she did on Noah's Ark and Noah's sacrifice after the Ark. Christian music, she read passages and psalms about music, wrote a 150 uh, report on the purpose of music, studied while we sing, wrote a 150 word report on history of It Is Well With My Soul. Uh, Christian reading, she read three books about Christian heroes and wrote a report on each one of them. Uh, Christian writing, she wrote a poem, made a track and a comic strip about salvation. Citizenship, she learned about the importance of our heritage and uh, wrote a report. Daily devotions, consistently complete devotions in the Master Club book. Uh, the Discovery Bible study books. Uh, she studied a variety of issues, uh, salvation, baptism, church membership, etc. Um, good news, she studied Bible stories and had to answer questions. The hiking badge, uh, how to do that carefully and safely. And that was what, a two mile walk, I believe, if I remember right. Um, the home helper had specific ways to help at home for four weeks. Uh, wrote notes to family members, completed chores without being asked. Keepers at home studied Proverbs 31 and wrote a report, a uh, hundred word report 
report. Meal planning helped babysit and made some jewelry. Uh, the prayer warrior studied the importance of prayer uh, and different strategies to praying. Uh, proverb a day, she uh, read a proverb that coincides with the day's date for an entire month. And the Sunday school faithfulness, if I remember, that 16 um, weeks of um, being in Sunday school. And uh, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Um, and we've got a couple things we want to give you. Let me make sure I get the right one. Um, the first thing, the first thing here um, is this is your certificate for your ambassador award. Congratulations. This award is presented to Addie Angley, uh, Addie Angley, Addie Langley, um, 823, um, 2020. Um, and then this one is the one we've been waiting for. This is the Ambassador Award, the Platinum. And it says, um, Ambassador Award, now then we're ambassadors for Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.20. Master Club's highest honor is presented to Addie Langley, Community Baptist Church, 2020. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. I don't think you want to leave yet. Um, and then um, I just believe in rewarding kids for doing above and beyond. Uh, and uh, I had told them months ago uh, before quarantine that I was going to do this. And they halfway thought I was kidding. Uh, some of them got fired up, as you've seen. Um, but uh, I told them that I'd, we'd give them a $100 check um, for doing Listen, he said, that's a lot of money. We'd do it for everything else. Yeah. Do it for everything else. And so, Addy, you've earned this, and we just want you to know how proud we are of you. All right, Mr. Kincaid, come on up here. Kevin, am I right that you have another year left? Is that right? Another year left in Master Club. This guy um, got busy during his quarantine time. And um, total, um, well, I'll just read some of the things here. Um, bicycling, he did the safety and riding, the campfires, as he mentioned, the Children's Bible Institute. He had to read 14 pamphlets about Bible stories and lessons and answered all the quiz questions. The Christian art, the Joan and the Whale, and the hand knocking, you saw photos of those. The Christian music, he uh, researched Fanny Crosby and how music is used in the Bible. Uh, filled their shoes, he read the biography on George Mueller and prepared a hundred word report on that. Uh, the good news, he studied Bible stories and answered questions, great Bible stories. Uh, he read 600 plus Bible stories. This one earned six badges due to the extensive readings. Uh, hiking was a care and safety. He also did the proverb a day for a month. The Sunday school faithfulness uh, and the Christian reading. Uh, he read a book on Billy Sunday and wrote 100 word report. And um, I was talking to him I'm back there, and I said, uh, he said, Brother Josh, and I said, what? And he said, I got all 30 badges now. I said, okay, thank you for letting me know. I'll let everybody know. Um, but uh, I asked him, I said, um, I said, what else is there to do? And he said, Brother Josh, he said, I've done all the boy ones. He said, the rest of them are for the girls. And so, um, uh, so but we're so proud of him. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about something else he did here in just a minute. Um, but Kevin, uh, first of all, I want to give you your ambassador award. Congratulations. This award is presented to Kevin Kincaid uh, on today's day. And then, um, again, our, one of our first two platinum, our first guy platinum award winner. Here you are as a, as a fifth grader. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.20. Master Club's highest honor is presented to Kevin Kincaid, Community Baptist Church, July 26, 2020. And so, Kevin, we are so proud of you, my friend. We also, um, because of one of a couple of your badges, we'll talk about those in just a minute, and the fact that you're a fifth grader uh, and did this. Uh, we want to give you the Master Club Outstanding Achievement Award, and it says, Award to Kevin Kincaid for extra effort in Master Club. Your faithfulness and Christian character is honoring to the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks for serving the Lord in our church. Amen. <clears throat> Do you want this, or should I give it to Dad? 
this, this guy right here, I, I would talk to him about some of his projects and reading, and he, we were real spiritual with each other. He's my buddy. I'm coming for your money. I'm coming for your money. So you go, you go for that. Um, but we also wanted to give him uh, a check as well, and so we wanted to do that for you. Don't go anywhere yet. Um, but then um, several of his badges were earned um, together. And um, we've got something else we want to do for Mr. Kevin. Um, this guy got serious. And um, mm, many times preparing for tonight and thinking about what he's been doing as a youth pastor has put me under conviction. Just being straight honest with you. Quarantine started in the middle of March. You hear me? March. He qualified for platinum July, is it July or June? 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 From March to June, you're looking at a fifth grader that read his Bible cover to cover. Let me say that again because y'all didn't hear me. You're looking at a fifth grader tonight from March to June, read his entire Bible cover to cover. Now, how many, I don't want you to raise your hand, but how many of us have been saved 25 years that hadn't done what this little fellow's done in three months? Now, Kevin, I want to charge in front of the whole church just because you've read it one time. That's a living book. You understand? It ain't, it ain't Wizard of Oz and it ain't uh, our favorite story. That's a living book. It's inspired. And every day you go to that book, if you'll let him, God will give you something new from that book. Every day. Don't ever get tired of it. Don't stop. The routine that you've set up and the routine that you've, you've put in that book, stay with it. may not be able to read 20 chapters every day, but you set that time along with God uh, and you stay in that Bible. Um, but we wanted to do something. That's pretty special if you ask me. And um, I heard that you like, I know you like fishing, but I heard that you like hunting as well. Okay? So... There is a fella that's pretty famous. Um, they call him the preacher man. His name is Jody Harrison. And Jody Harrison is a pastor that we know. And he's known along the southeast. He gave you a t-shirt uh, there. We'll give that to you. But when we told Brother Jody about what you had done and that we were looking for something for you, he wanted to get involved. And so he made a custom turkey call out of African wood um, that, and he engraved it inside and he just wanted you to know how, how special you are and how appreciative he is as well of what you've done there. So uh, we just want you to know, buddy, uh, we're so proud of you, so thankful for you. And uh, let's give Brother Kevin a hand there. Man, what a blessing. Amen. Oh, aren't you glad you didn't miss that tonight? Boy, what a blessing. I'm so proud of them. And we're going to be checking back with Addie and Kevin to make sure that their money did not get confiscated by mom and dad. And that uh, Nick doesn't use it on bait and, and lures and everything like that. Amen. No, we're so proud of them. And uh, you can go be turned to Deuteronomy chapter number 30. Um, and uh, I, I think it would be a plum shame for the Master Club kids who studied to do st Bible storytelling and puppets and to sing, I think it'd be a shame for nobody to ever get to see that. So I think we need to have them practicing to, to do that coming up sometime. I'm not saying next week, but next few weeks or month or whatever. So I don't know if maybe Miss Beth or y'all could maybe uh, get together on a Wednesday night or something like that and get them together and practice out there in the fellowship hall or something like that maybe and let them kind of get it, get it ready and, uh, and let me know. And then we'll, we'll carve out a Sunday night and let them, I always, that's one of my favorite Sunday nights is getting to see them do their stories and sing the songs and uh, do all that stuff they do. It's just, it's just amazing. And now, Brother Josh, we got a bunch of adults that want to read the Bible for $100. And uh, <clears throat> call your mama because you ain't getting it from us. Amen. <laughs> but we've kind of got a theme tonight um, about God's Word. And what I, I'm telling you, Kevin, that just impressed me. It's, it's a huge, huge deal to read your Bible through in that amount of time. And um, I'm just so impressed with that. That's a blessing. And, you know, Brother um, 
Bud Stiltner, when he was here in revival, he made a statement one night, and he, and he wasn't even preaching on this really, just kind of in passing, but it just stuck with me. And Brother Josh and I was talking about it, he said the same thing, it stuck with him. He made a statement that said, we need a re revival of the Bible. And we were thinking about that as we were planning all this, and, uh, and I, I just, uh, this week, it just stayed on my heart. So that's, that's what I want to preach on tonight for a few minutes, a revival of the Bible. You know, we're in Deuteronomy chapter number 30, but, you know, Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter number 4, he said, uh, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. And, uh, of course, we get our doctrine and exhortation from the Word of God, but how do we get it? we got to read it. He said, he said, till I come, give attendance to reading. And I want to challenge you tonight on this thought of getting back to the book and revival of the Bible. Now, in Deuteronomy 30, I'm just going to give you a few thoughts tonight, but in Deuteronomy 30, Moses is coming to the end of his life. He's 120 years old, and, uh, and he's charging Israel. He's charging them to read, to remember, and to obey the commands of God. And if you look back, actually, before chapter 30, back in the last verse of chapter 29, verse 29, he says uh, to them, he says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. So what he says is, 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 is when we, the things that we don't have answers for in this world, the secret things, those belong to God. We can't answer where God doesn't answer. I can't tell you why God does something in your life or why some tragedy befell you if it's not in the word of God. But he said, on the other hand, the things that are revealed, the things that he's put in writing in black and white for us to read, he said, those do belong to us. Amen. Now here's the problem. You got a lot of Christians who spend more time outside the Bible trying to figure out mysteries God doesn't even want you to know about than to do than to spend time in what he has revealed to you and I. Amen. And so, so I want you to notice a few things about this and situation in the word of God. First of all, we see the problem here with Moses and Israel. The problem was they had strayed from God's word. Look back in chapter 29 and look at verse number 25. The Bible says, uh, these men shall say, because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, for they went and served other gods and worshiped them, gods whom they knew not and whom he had not given unto them. And so here the problem was, Moses said, listen, you people have forsaken God. You've gotten away from his word. You've gotten away from his commandments. And that led them to false gods. And can I tell you, when you get away from the true God, there's only other, one other God to go to, and that's the false God. Amen. And so, so what happened is, is they let, they let the devil lead them astray from the word of God. And I can tell you this, the problem problem with our nation we're seeing right now is because a nation has strayed away from the Bible. They've strayed away from God's Word. Used to be, you, you, they read the, the Bible in public schools. How many of you, do you, any of you remember, did they read the Bible when you went to public school? Some, look at how many hands y'all went through. Uh, read I remember in my, in my uh, uh, grade school, uh, they, I remember our teacher reading in the public school the Bible. She'd read a Bible verse every day and I thought, well, that would be, that'd be lawsuits abounding today if they tried to do that. Used to, you could read the Bible in public schools no more. Used to, you read the Bible in the home. But even in Christian homes now, the Bible's not really read. How, how, many, how many families have a Bible devotion time each night where they get together and read, even if it's just a verse, but read the Word of God to our children and, and, and let them hear mom and dad read the Word of God and, and pray together. Used to be a time when there was a family altar in the home, but no more. There used to be a time when, when uh, you'd read it in church. <laughs> Amen. Sadly, there's a revival needed in the pulpits of America. There's a lot of preachers now who don't go to the Bible, Brother Lamont. They preach everything else. They preach their opinion. They preach what they think about it. But I'm going to tell you something, man. We need to hear what God has to say about it. This morning, now, I don't always do this. I just, whatever, however God puts it on my heart, I don't have a certain thing. But I went back. I was just curious because I wasn't doing it for any certain reason. But the message I preached this morning, I went back. And I said, I wonder how many verses I put in, that, in the message this morning. I went back and there was 30 scripture verses, 30 verses besides the text uh, that, that I gave this morning. And I thought, dear Lord, help me not to ever get away from the Bible because it's not me. I don't have enough important things to say of my own. All I can give you is what thus saith the Lord. 
but that's really what matters. Amen? And so we see the problem is and, uh, that we've gotten away from the Word. You know why we have, got, have a group of national leaders in our country who defend the right to murder an unborn baby through abortion? We have a group of national leaders who defend homosexuality and transgenderism and now even pedophilia, which is becoming a big thing right now, supported by them. Uh, we have a group of people who defend a person's right to burn a Bible, but not to teach a Bible. They defend the right to assemble riotously, uh, but not assemble religiously. Uh, they defend all those things. But you know why? Because somewhere along the way, they got away from the Bible. They got away from God's word. Now, we understand why ungodly people might not want to read the Bible. But what is our excuse? What's our excuse? For not reading and understanding what God has to say. We need a revival of the Bible. We see the, the problem, number two, we see the plan he put in place. What is it? Repent. Whenever there's a problem disobeying God, there's only one solution, repent. That's, that's the solution, amen? And now notice true repentance will involve some things. First of all, repentance, it first begins, letter A, with the contemplation. What do you mean by that? Well, chapter 30 and verse number 1 he tells them, he says, it shall come to pass when all these things will come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind. In other words, he said, listen, if you're going to repent, you need to contemplate what God's word has to say. You need to be thinking about and meditating on what God says in his word. And it says, when they remembered God's word, notice it said the blessing and the curse. Did you catch that? You know what? When Moses preached the word of God, when they read from the word of God, they didn't do like a lot today and just give them the good stuff, and just the happy stuff and the feel good stuff and the cotton and candy stuff. And we're going to give you the good stuff and the blessing, but we're going to stay away from the curse because people don't like to hear negative preaching. He read the blessing and the curse. And but can I say this? The blessing, getting the blessing until you know what the curse is. <laughs> Amen. And so we need the blessing and the curse. We need to know what both is. We need to know what God says we ought to do, but we also need to know what God says we ought not to do. Amen. And so when, he, when they heard that, uh, they repented. And I thought, oh, how we need to repent for ignoring God's word as well. And so repentance involves, it involves a contemplation, understanding what God's word says. Secondly, it involves a change. A change should take place in repentance. A person who says they repented, but their life is still the same, they've not repented. Now, notice what it says in verse 2 of chapter 30. And shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, that thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul. That's what repentance is. Repent is to turn. And he says when you repent, that means you're going to return back to the Lord and back to obeying his voice. You know, we hear, when we read the Bible, we hear preaching, and God speaks to our heart, and we don't want to do what God says. we got a choice to do. Are we going to be our voice, or are we going to obey God's voice? Repentance is, I'm returning back to the Lord, and I'm going to do what he says do. Now, look what it says in verse number 10. He said, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in the book of the law. The commandments, you've got, of course, the Ten Commandments is the main, the, the popular, the famous ones, but there were over 600 commands that God gave his people. And so they had the commandments to obey, but then they had the statutes. They had the, the more nitty-gritty laws and, and things about how to live life on a daily basis. And, 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 and it got really specific that they were to obey God's law. And so true repentance involves a change of conduct. It involves a person changing what they're doing. They, they were to obey all God said with all their heart. Did you see that? You, you know why reading the Bible is so important? It's because you cannot obey God's commands if you've not read God's commands. You can't obey something you don't know. So the best way to know that you're obeying God <clears throat> is by reading what he has to say. Let me give you the third thing. Repentance also involves a consecration. 
a consecration. Consecration follows repentance. Again, verse 2, he said, Obey with all thine heart, with all thy soul. Verse number 10, Turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul. True consecration is from the heart and from the soul. It's not just an outward uh, show. <clears throat> it's, it's not just an outward show. Well, I'm going to do this if I'll get a reward. I'll do this as long as the preacher calls my name out. That, that's not Repentance says, I'm going to do this because it's right to do. Amen. He said, all, he made it sort of like a, a child who, who technically obeys. You know, the, your parents, you know, you tell your child, clean your room. They technically obey, but they mumble and grumble the whole time they're obeying. Now, I know some of y'all don't know what that's like to have a child like that. All your children obey exactly what, yeah, but, but there's some people out there who have kids who, who, who aren't so happy to obey, and they mumble and grumble. You know, there's Christians like that. God tells them what to do. Brother Dale, they'll do it, but they ain't happy about it, right? So like the disciples, when they'd been fishing all night and they'd caught nothing and they come in, Jesus said, throw the net on the other side of the boat. You can hear Peter and them saying, Jesus, I know you're not a professional fisherman like we are. And I know you don't understand how to catch fish like we do. You're just a teacher. But I'm just telling you, there's no fish out there. We tried. And he said, cast it on the, and I can just, you know, and you, you know by the word, nevertheless. Yeah. Bible says, Peter said, nevertheless. It's almost like he said, it's not going to work. <laughs> nevertheless. Come on, guys. That's kind of the attitude. Yeah. Nevertheless, we'll just throw it in here. Just, just, just show him it ain't going to work. Let's just appease him, you know. That's the way some of us are. I don't want to go to church, nevertheless. <laughs> I don't want to be there Sunday night, Nevertheless. When you, when you love somebody with all your heart, you want to spend your time with them. You know, when, when my wife and I were dating, man, I mean, boy, those little love notes, you know, just, boy, just so sweet. She'd put perfume on there, and, oh, I couldn't wait to smell them things. I mean, I'm telling you, I'd get that letter, and it's almost like I could feel myself just rising up. Whew. I mean, it's just so sweet. And then reading the words in there, you know why? Because they wouldn't have nobody else but me. Nobody else but me. Guess what? This is God's love letter to us. God's love letter. I want to tell you something. Listen, it sure does smell sweet when you read how he loves you. Boy, I think that song he sang this morning, my goodness. And so this is God's love letter. So we see the problem, the plan. And then lastly, number three, I want you to see the promise. God promised them some things when they repented and got back to reading the word like they ought to, when they repented and got back to obeying the word of God, first of all, there was a promise of a return to the land. Now look, look at uh, verse number three, and we see a promise of their return. He said, and then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and will uh, and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered abroad. And so there's a promise of their return. He said, if you'll get back to my word, I will gather you all back together. But I've scattered you. You are scattered right now because when you run from God, that's all you're going to do is be scattered. Amen. But the problem is, promise is I'll bring you back. Can I tell you this? Maybe in your life you feel scattered right now. Have you been away from God's word? How much have you been reading God's word? Maybe get back in the word, the word of God and see if he don't start gathering you back, gathering your life and getting it back together. Have some order back to your life. Not only do we see the plan, the promise of their return, but we also see the purpose of their return. Why was he going to return them? Look at verse 5. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. So what he says is, Israel, if you'll obey me and return to my word and obey my commandments, I'll not only gather you back, but I'll multiply and I'll bless you more than even your fathers were blessed in the land. Boy, what an incentive, amen? I mean, it would prosper them. So there was a promise of a return to the land, but then there's also a promise of a revival among the people when they got back to God's word. You know why God promised that? Because repentance brings revival. Right. You'll never have revival without repentance. Right. Now look what it says in verse six. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all uh, thy mind. Now here, there's a repentance. Repentance brought revival to them, but notice it also mentions their seed, their children, 
their grandchildren. I'm going to tell you something. Listen, mom and dad, that's why you and I need to be right with God. That's why we need to be in the book. We need to be reading the Bible on a daily basis so that God can not only bless us, but he can bless our seed. He can bless our children. Well, I've thought many times how my dad has given testimony. Of course, he grew up on a farm and, uh, you know, seven boys and four girls and and a large family and how every night before they go to bed, how they'd have a time of prayer and altar prayer. And my grandpa would get them together as a family. That's a big old family. You can have a church by yourself with that family. Amen. And do that. But, I'm, but you look at, look at all my uncles and all of them, how they're living for God and serving God all the years. You know why? Because there was a foundation of living for God, a foundation of the book as a foundation for life. Listen, your family will benefit from a revival of the Bible. Your family will benefit from that. Let me give you the third thing. Not only revival among the people, but he promised a revenge among their enemies. Look what it says in verse 7. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuteth thee. We spend so much time trying to fight those who are fighting us, those who are coming against us. And God said, if you'll just get back to my book, you'll just have a revival of the Bible, You'll just get back to my word, obey my commands. He said, I will take care of your enemies. I will take care of them. Re- repentance results in God fighting our battles for us. He gives us the strength that we need. When we disobey uh, and we don't get in God's word, what we're doing is we're turning ground over to Satan to attack us. We're opening ourselves up to those afflictions I talked about in the morning service this morning. We, we, uh, we end up trying to fight in our own strength. Let me give you the last thing, letter D. He promised a revival of a discovery of what was lost, a recovery of what was lost. Repentance always results in gaining more than you lost when you get back to God. Amen. Look, verse 5 says, he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. Wow. Verse 9, and the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand. He said, when you come back to the word and you just obey my word, everything you touch, God will bless. I mean, I'm not saying it's all going to be financial. I'm not saying you're going to be a millionaire. That's not up to me. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that whatever God, whatever you put your hand to, God will bless it because you're honoring God. You're honoring his word. And God blesses that. Repentance will Bring God's blessings back into your life. Because we need a revival of the Bible, I want to encourage you to begin reading your Bible consistently every day. And I want to give you a few things real quick before I close. Five quick things that you need to do when you read your Bible every day. Here's here's how to help read your Bible. What you need to do is when when you read the Bible, you need to put on your Bible reading specs. Your Bible reading specs. So what are those? S-P-E-C-S. The first thing when you're reading the Bible, S, you need to look for, is there any sin I need to confess? When I'm reading the Bible, does God show and point out a sin in someone's life or sin, something God says, thou shalt not do this or don't do this, or, or you see something that where they did it, they disobeyed God and God judged them for it. Is there any sin that I need to confess in my life from my Bible reading? Letter P, Is there any promise here to claim? Is there any promise in the word of God that I just read? Is there any promise? Now, let me just say this. Every promise in the Bible is true, but we understand every promise in the book doesn't belong to us today. Got quite on that. There's promises he gave to Israel that doesn't belong to me. There's promises he gave to Abraham that doesn't belong to me. There's, every promise is not to the church age today. There's promises in the Old Testament, and their promises were real, and they're true, and God kept his word. But not every, I, can't, I can't go back and claim some of those for today, but God's given me plenty for today. <laughs> He's given me plenty of promises to live on. And so what promises here, are there promises that are up for us today that I can claim and I can live on? What promise is there to claim? Letter E, is there an example here to follow? Is there an example? Just like we just read here in Deuteronomy 30, what an example to follow. This group turned back, and he said, if you'll turn back and repent and turn to God, God will bless you. What a great example. Let us see, is there a command to obey? Let us see, is there a command to obey? Is there something God is commanding us to do that I need to obey? And the last letter in the word specs, is there a stumbling block I need to avoid? Let me just say this. You know, there is, there are, there's a difference between sin and a weight. 
Bible says in Hebrews, lay aside every weight and every sin which does so easily beset us. There are some things in our lives that may not be sin. We, we know what sin is. The sin is when God's word says don't do something. Amen. When it, when it uh, uh, dishonors God, disobeys God's word, that's a sin. But you know, there's some things in our life that's not necessarily a sin, but it can hinder you in your walk with God. It can hinder you. It can slow you down. There's some things that might be, uh, whether it's some preferences in your life or just some things, uh, for some, it might be some music. It might be some areas uh, in your music. You might be listening to some things that's really not pleasing to God. That's become a weight to you. Somebody else, it might be another area of your life. And so when you read the Bible, ask God, is there some stumbling block? I've already looked at sin that I need to confess, but now is there something else maybe I'm doing that could cause someone else to stumble by coming after me if they follow me? Is there, some, is there something I'm doing, decisions I'm making? Let me, ask you, listen, let me ask you fathers for a second. Maybe you need to ask this. Is there something I'm doing that if my son or daughter come after me doing what I'm doing, would it lead them to disobey God? Mom, same thing. Is there something you're doing that if your daughter follows right in your footsteps, she has the same attitude you have, she has the same goals you have, is it going to lead her to or away from God? Hmm. That takes us back to letter S, sin to confess, doesn't it? Is there any stumbling block that I need to avoid that, that will cause somebody else to stumble? Yeah, I can do this and I'm okay. Maybe you can, but what about your child coming after you? The hurdle you can jump over easily could cause them to trip and fall. George Mueller said this. He said, it's a common temptation of Satan to make us give up the reading of the word and prayer when our enjoyment is gone as if it were of no use to read the scriptures when we don't enjoy them. And as if there are no use to pray when we have no spirit of prayer. The truth is that in order to enjoy the word, we ought to continue to read it. And the way to obtain the spirit of prayer is to continue praying. The less we read the word of God, the less we desire to read it. And the less we pray, the less we desire to pray. Boy, what, what a great advice. He said, if you want to have a heart from the word and a love for the word, I mean, listen, we could pray, God, give me a love for your word. You know what he's going to say? Get more word in you then. That's right. Start reading more word. That means you start reading it before you feel it. You start reading it. You pray more. When it's hardest to pray, that's when you need to pray the hardest. Because the devil's trying to fight you. Now, I, I, want, to, I want to finish with this. Uh, Brother Josh and I have been talking about this for quite some time in our staff meetings. And, uh, boy, this, this really is, is exciting. We've been just kind of praying about when the right time would be to kind of do this. And it just seemed like this is perfect, perfect timing with, with, uh, with our master club night tonight and, and, uh, preaching on this. And that is, we want to, we want to have, uh, a Bible reading challenge, a Bible reading challenge that we want to challenge our church with. And now, now one of the things we're going to do is uh, our Bible reading, we're going to have on our church app. And if you've got your phone, uh, you know, um, if you get download our church app, and uh, we're going to have starting on, uh, I think we'll have it ready on September the 20th. So it's uh, three or four weeks away or so. And, uh, and we're going to have a Bible reading schedule on that app that you can go through. And it'll give you certain uh, chapters to read each day. And if you follow that Bible reading schedule, I think uh, you'll read the whole Bible in a year, right? Um, or if you want to get, uh, do it more, get with Kevin. And, um, <laughs> and he'll tell you, amen, how to do that. And uh, you, you can read more. That's great. But I mean, but, but, but it's just a certain amount of chapters. It's nothing like what he did because he did that in a matter of a few months. But for a whole year, it may be four or five chapters. It may not be that much. It depends on the day. But there are a, a schedule in there. But here's what we want to do. Not just to challenge you as an individual to read the Bible, but we want to challenge you to get a Bible reading partner. We want you to have a Bible buddy. What we want you to do is we want you to get, find somebody a friend, somebody in the church, I say a friend, you're going to get an enemy? I don't guess you are, so it had to be a friend. So anyway, but uh, get, get, get someone in the church, get someone and, and say, hey, would you be my Bible reading partner? And because what we want to do, our goal is with this Bible reading schedule, we're going to start on September 20th, and we're all going to be reading the same chapters every day, the whole church. We're going to go through it together. And what we're hoping to do, because we know the more we get in the Word, the more the Word gets into us. And can you imagine a church that's coming, a church of people who's coming to church every week full of the word? Whew. It's going to make my job a lot easier as a preacher. I can tell you that right now. Amen. And so, 
And so can you imagine that? And so what we, here's our goal. Now, it doesn't have to just be two people. If you want three in your group, that's fine. Or four. We, we, we would encourage you maybe not to go real, real big because it's going to be harder to keep up with because what we want you to do if you, uh, with your partner, what you want to encourage you to do is, is you contact each other on a regular basis. It doesn't have to necessarily be every day maybe, but if you want to, every day is fine. But just contact them. Hey, uh, did you get your Bible reading done today? What did you get from it? Here's what God spoke to me about in my Bible reading today. Just this one thought. When you're reading the Bible, maybe make, make a note of God brings something out, you know, and, and maybe God will, uh, you'd be surprised once you start reading the Bible consistently, there'll be some questions you have in the Bible and all of a sudden God will answer that. He might answer it in the preaching. I've had that many times. People said, preacher, you preached on a message. I was just thinking about that this week. Well, I know I was spying on you. No, I didn't. I wasn't. <laughs> just kidding. But, uh, uh, but uh, God has a way of doing that. The Holy Spirit works in that way. And so we want you to use this to contact each other regularly, uh, encourage one another, um, sh share what you've gotten from your reading. Here's another thing we want to encourage you to do when you start is to uh, post on Facebook the verse that stood out to you and a little thought of what you got from it. We're not talking about doing a Bible study on Facebook. We're just saying, here's a little thought here. God just spoke to me about something in my own life, encouraged me. I want to share this. You know what's going to happen, we hope, is it all of a sudden now, Instead of a bunch of no good for nothing Facebook posts that a lot of other people are putting on there, we'll start flooding it with scripture verses and people giving thoughts of what they got. Not from the preacher. I'll, I'll do it too, but not just from me. They kind of expect it from the preacher. But here's just church members. Here's kids. Here's teenagers sharing. Here's my verse that God gave me today in my Bible reading. He spoke to me about this. You know what that's going to do for other people saying, man, what's going on there at Community Baptist Church? I mean, I know they got a good looking preacher, but my goodness, something's really going on over there. What is it? What is it? All these things about the Bible is going on. And so put that, put that verse on there that God spoke to you about. Now, here's a couple of last thoughts, and then we're going to pray and we'll be dismissed. Um, now, uh, well, before I forget about it too, this, this Bible reading schedule, we are going to work and have a printed version as well. So for any of the older ones or some that does not have a smartphone and can't get an app, we'll have a printed version for you. You can take home and you can stay along, read along with us and you can get your own Bible buddy or whatever too. And y'all, it, it, it really matters. So you can, so don't worry about that. Uh, we'll have a copy for you as well. Now here's, here's another thing I thought about as I was praying about this, if if you if you got children at home, if you don't if you, your family you have not yet started or do not have a regular family devotional time, this would be a great way to start. This would be a great time to start. Say what what we're going to do now. We all in the family, anybody that's old enough can read and can do this. We're all going to be reading the same chapters every day anyway, right? We're going to be in the Bible plan. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the family together every night, and maybe one of the four chapters that we all got to read anyway, we're going to read it together as a family. Or maybe two chapters, whatever, however you want to do it. You can even say, you know, what I'm going to do is, is maybe uh, one night, dad reads the chapter. The next night, mama reads the chapter. The next night, one of the children. Or you could alternate and say, we're going to go around the family, and, and each of us are going to take a verse. You just take the next verse and go around. And just creative. Be fun with it. But it's God's word. And use that as a chance to say, we're just going to maybe read one of these chapters together, and then we're going to have a little word of prayer and go to bed. I'm telling you, that would be a great way to start your family devotion time is with this Bible reading challenge. Now, the last thought, and I'm done, is this. Here's another thing the Lord uh, kind of spoke to me about that might be a great a way to help our church, is as you get a Bible partner, a Bible buddy together, Get somebody, maybe somebody's coming to church and y'all are you know, already fellowship in the church, but you're going to fellowship with this. Then maybe you two decide and pray about asking another person that's not really as faithful to church as they ought to be. Maybe somebody's not coming like they ought to be and ask them, would you be our partner as well? And what that can do is help encourage them by daily talking to them or, or weekly talking to them. How are you doing in your Bible? How you, and, her, and bringing somebody else in and helping encourage them to start getting in the Word. Who knows? We might start being able to pull some more people back in church as they start fellowshipping around the Word of God. Amen? Isn't that, it will be great. I'm excited about this. And so uh, we want to encourage you now. We're, we're saying this now because we've still got several weeks or four or five weeks, I guess, September 20th. So we've got plenty of time and, uh, to get, be getting with somebody about this. If you have any questions, you can see me or Brother Josh, and uh, we'll help you with this. Uh, but we're, we're praying, man, God's going to do something big. I can't wait to see next year at this time to see what God's going to do in our church. Just fellowshipping around the Word of God all week. I mean, can you imagine somebody posting a, a verse on, on, on uh, Facebook or Instagram and what they got? You say, oh, I remember reading that in my Bible time, and here's what I got too. 
That's going to be great. Amen. Brother Josh, did you have anything you want to add to this real quick before we pray? Nothing else? Okay. All right, let's, let's stand to our feet. And we're not going to have a traditional invitation tonight as such. But I want you to bow your heads for just a moment. As we have just centered tonight and focused around the Word of God, we need a revival of the Bible. It might be tonight you need a revival in your own heart. I don't know what God may have spoken to you about, but I want to challenge you now, right now, where you're at, to just talk to the Lord for just a second. Tell him where you're struggling at. There might be a dad here tonight. might be a mom. and You struggled with this matter of family devotions. You just didn't really know how to do it or where to start, and it's kind of been awkward or whatever. I hope you'll pray about using this as a great jumping off point. Talk to your family or kids and say, we're going to get this thing together. Because you know what? Back in Deuteronomy, and I didn't go back and read it, but you go back and read in earlier chapters of Deuteronomy, that was what God commanded the parents to do. He told them, he said, every day when you rise up, when you go throughout the day, when you go to sleep at night, when you go back, read the word of God and get it in their ears and in their heart. We've gotten away from that, and we wonder why our society is where it's at tonight. So I want to encourage you, and I'm praying for you. I pray for our fam church families every day. And I'm praying God will stir something in you, Dad. I'm praying God will stir something in you, Mom, to say, you know what? We're going to start having a, boy, wouldn't it be great to have some of our kids grow up and to say, I don't remember a whole lot about my childhood and other things that other people did. I, maybe I didn't get to do, but I remember one thing. Without fail, every night we gathered together and we read the Bible and we prayed. I remember my mom praying for me. My dad called my name out in prayer. I'm going to tell you something. That's something that will last a lifetime. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word tonight. Thank you for, Lord, speaking to hearts because the word went out tonight. And I believe you spoke to hearts. I want to thank you for Brother Josh. I want to thank you for Miss Beth Langley and, and Miss April and all of our Master Club workers, so many that they weren't even up here, but so many other workers have spent so much time helping to teach and train our Master Club kids. Father, I want to thank you for each one of these kids that were up here. Father, that's, that's the generation that's coming up that's going to be leaders in our church and other teachers. And Lord, I just thought while they were standing up here, I wonder how many on the platform at that one time are future Master Club teachers. How many right here, maybe one of them might be a missionary one day. Lord, we don't know what you're going to do, but I pray you'd help me as the pastor and as our church, Father, as we gather around the word of God this next year, God, as we just put a, uh, put a determination in our hearts that we're going to get back to a revival of the Bible and to read it, to meditate on it, and to study it, and to get it in our lives to see what you're going to do with our, with our church. Father, I love you. Thank you for giving us the living word of God. And I pray you'd do something that would change us forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, God's been good to us, hasn't he? Amen. It was a blessing to be here tonight. Amen. All right. Well, don't forget, we'll dismiss from the back. If y'all would, go on out. Dismiss from the back with fellowship outside. And we'll see you Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. You're dismissed.